Welcome to the fish on the plate pen and ink tutorial. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to not use the dipping pen and nib. I, I thought of using the dipping pen and nib today, um, but I thought I'm just going to stick with the, the, the pens because I thought it's just easier for me when it comes to teaching. Um, sometimes I find with the dipping pen and nib, um, you know, it can give you a bit of a problem. It might big, put a big blob of, of ink on there, especially if you're in a, a bit more of a rush. So it's fine if you've got time and you're not going to, to rush the project, you know what I'm saying? So I thought I'd rather just stick with um, just doing the pens. So I've just got the, the, the one, the double zero three and the five. Okay, so the five is obviously the thickest. Um, I might use that later, maybe for an eye or something like that, but I'm going to rather stick with these two small ones. Um, okay, so when I did the, the tracing, so I used that carbon... Uh, that graphite paper it had did make quite dark lines on mine for some odd reason it doesn't always do that maybe I just press quite hard so just be aware if you do that in future you know if you do use um, the graphite paper you know if you press quite hard it's going to make quite a, a dark line you can see there it doesn't really want to sort of erase too well so I'm just going to have to um, just use it and to my advantage okay all right, so I'm going to, there we go, I've just edited it the same way. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the, um, the wood because it's a nice sort of texture to start off, get you going, um, and then we'll move on to the fish, okay? So let's start off with the woody part. I'm going to use, I'm not going to go with a very fine, fine, fine one initially. Um, there are quite some fine lines in there. But I'm going to use the 01 because the 01 gives me enough of a choice where if I press hard, I can get a thicker line. And if I press um, lightly, I can get the thinner line. In between, if I decide I want to put some very fine lines in, then I can do that afterwards. Okay, because you know, some, I usually do start off with a very fine one. But it doesn't really apply to this wood in particular. With a fish, yes, I'll probably go with a finer one. All right, so I'm going to start off with the wood. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to start on the left here because it's just easier. Um, I, always, I prefer to work left to right, it's not everybody that likes to do that. Um, you can see I have masked everything out, like I said. Just that it makes it easier for when I do the wood, I don't have to go and really be very specific when I put the colours on. Okay, so I'm going to start off and start bringing in some of that texture. And obviously using lines going down, and you can see if I do a scratchy sort of feeling, then I can get quite a, a light sort of line. And then if I press harder, I can get a dark line. That's what I mean by using this particular um, this particular size. It's quite nice because you can actually sort of get a thick and a hard line together at the same time. Sorry, I must actually put my sound off there. Um, my adverts. Right, there we go. Okay, so we're just going to start off getting some of that woody texture in. Start off lighter, preferably, or preferably. Um, I find it's just easier to start off with the lighter lines and then go darker where I want to go a bit darker. And just, you know, you can use that as a reference. So what's nice about this, this particular picture as well, you'll notice that the, they all have sort of different textures, each sort of panel of wood. Okay, can you see there? They sort of come and they've got, some of them have got a bit of scratches and then that sort of thing. So don't go and make all your wood identical. Okay, so you can, I mean, I'm not saying you don't, you, it's, it, it's a, a no-no, but um, it is nice to bring in the different sort of textures. So don't go and use the same texture with every single one and, and get lazy. Okay, so rather um, sort of look at your reference and use that as a guideline as to what you want to re what you want to create you know it's like when you do anything that repeats itself so there's a lot of repetition so there's a lot of repetitive wood over here you always try and vary it slightly to make it a little bit more interesting and it will never clash with the fish because the fish has got a completely different texture so you don't have to worry about that at all And remember, we are going to put some of that color on here as well. So you don't have to do a lot, okay? Um, unless you're going to sort of concentrate more on the pen and ink side, um, that is entirely up to you. But 
I mean, I wouldn't really do much more than that because I'm going to be doing that sort of grey wash on top of this. Okay. So I'm just going to get that idea of the wood. As I said, I am going to use um, my picture as a reference. And here I can see that it's got a little bit of a slant to it, which is quite nice. It's just obviously the way the grain of the wood runs. You know, remember when they cut these, um, these pieces, they don't necessarily always go with the grain. So it's nice to see, you know, when you've got a little bit of a against the grain feel here. Also, it helps as well if your pen is a little bit older. So this one I have been using. Um, so the number one, if it's a brand new pen, may not give you quite such a scratchy feel. Okay, so if it's not doing that, then rather move on to the, the 005 or the 003, the final one that you've got there, okay. So as I said, um, if you're not, I don't know what sort of paper everybody is using there, um, but as long as it's, you know, if it's up to the 190 is fine. I know, Corin, you've got the 190 there, um, and it will be fine when it comes to this. It's only if it's a very fine one, you know, sort of like a 100 GSM or a 120 GSM, that um, if you put a lot of water on it, it's going to, it's going to buckle. But as long as it's taped down, okay, I mean, this is a 300, I think, yeah. So, um, but up to one, one, from 190 onwards is usually okay. And also we're not going to be putting big blobs of water on here. The only place we, we're going to really sort of put a solid sort of color is basically the plate. The rest of it's going to be little splashes of color here and there, you know, because you don't want to, to get rid of all this texture. Remember as well, when it comes to putting this texture in over here, you can always put in more afterwards, you know, so once you've done your bit of your color wash, you can actually put your, your more texture in if you want to with your pens. So just try and get loose, just get a feeling. That's why I wanted to start off with the wood, because it's, it's sort of relatively easy. And, you know, it doesn't take up too much... Um, the thought process, let's put it this way, you sort of want to get into the sort of mood of drawing.
uh, note, guys, quickly. <clears throat> so, um, you see the section where it meets up with his face there? Okay. So, what I want to try and do there is just make sure, I'm not putting a line. Um, you can put a few dots if you want to, just to sort of get where, where his face sort of ends like that. Um, and then make that sort of quite dark so that when you do his face, uh, the the fish of, uh, the face of the fish, then you can actually make it stand out. Can you see how nicely that white part of his face stands out against the dark wood? All right. So I want you to to make a, a point of putting that in if you can, because um, that will really make him pop as well. And if you want to behind his head, if you you make sure you do keep that a little bit lighter, okay? Because so that the dark part of him actually also stands out. All right. So just when it comes to certain parts of, of the, um, the picture, you see here you have a contrast between the smoothness um, and the very subtle sort of color over here. There's no texture in it at all. And his face to a point as well, but his face has got a little bit of texture in it. So you do want to keep that, that, um, uh, that contrast there of the, of the actual the tonalities there. Okay. That, that piece of wood there was a little bit of a sort of a knotty thing well actually it wasn't really and that's what I saw with that okay now that I've zoomed and it's not there anymore but anyway <laughs> but anyway I bought, I bought a knot in there um, so it's nice to have a little bit of can you see they're just sort of adding a bit of variety so each you can see each little piece of wood of mine has got a little, slightly different texture I'm not making each one the same they're all slightly different okay um, I'll maybe bring in some darker lines afterwards, but I'll first see when I put the wash on. Maybe I'll just leave it as it is. I might, I might, you know, want to really keep the the focus on the fish because they are the focus. Um, but so I'm always a bit wary to sort of go overboard and and throw a whole lot of texture in without sort of thinking it through, you know. So always have a bit of a plan. It's nice to have a little bit of a plan in 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 your head when you first start. But remember, you don't have to follow it all the time, you know. Also just go with the flow, sometimes it's nice to go with the flow.
So you'll see where I've done now the dark part around the head and around the tail. Okay? Be very careful that you don't have a halo. Alright. So you know when you so do the dark part around there, but you must remember you need to sort of continue it down as well. Okay. So you can't just have the dark part to make it stand out because it just can you see there like that looks like a halo, alright? Although it could also be a shadow. I suppose if you want to put it that way, it would actually sort of give it a bit of a shadowy effect, as if there's a, a shadow lying on the on the on the on the um, the wood as well from the fish's tail. So you could leave it like that and leave it as a shadow if you wanted to, but just be careful that you don't get this, you know, halo effect in certain areas. Okay, because that can be quite quite uh, disconcerting. Okay, so now for instance, there I'm going to continue this dark piece up there. Okay, I'm actually having a lot of fun with this wood, by the way. It's just so, it's such a therapeutic me uh, <laughs> texture to do, actually, wood. <laughs>
you see my variety of, of um, textures that I've got in each piece of wood? Yes. And you can see it, actually, it just makes it so interesting. So my wood is definitely not boring, you know, um, and I'm really enjoying this. I mean, you know, one could actually even just have that as a background and have the color in the fish if you wanted to. Do you know what I'm saying? So that could be a way to go as well, is just have your, your wood there uh, like that. But I am going to put a very slight wash on it, not, nothing too hectic, because I actually want those, those blues of the, of the plate. Yep. So, uh, you know, because the, the fish have got those sort of lovely pinks in them. So when I do do the color of the, the wash, then I'll, I'll rather stick to very sort of neutral sort of tones in the background. Um, and then keep the colors for the fish in that to make those pop. All right. So, because yeah, otherwise they become all sort of very similar. Um, unless you want that look, of course, obviously, you know, so yeah. I am going to finish the wood. Um, I think what I'll do is, no, actually I will finish the wood because I want to be able to put the paint on. So I'm going to do this top section as well. Um, but what I would suggest you do is if you, when I move on to the fish, if you haven't d finished doing the wood, just try and make sure that you do the wood sort of around where the plate in that is. So when we do the wash that you can... You can put that in, okay. All right, so.
So yeah, so once you've done all your wood, you can sort of look at it and say, okay, cool. Have a little bit there, do something over here and just make it interesting. So I'm going to keep this, the, the edges quite uninteresting because I don't want the eye, my eye to really go over here. So you'll notice those two edged pieces I've actually kept relatively, you know, just plain. No um, interesting sort of whirls or anything like that. <clears throat> Um, you know, as I've said before, often with all the other drawings and the paintings that we've done before, you know, I always say, always just be aware of what it is you do, you're drawing. So don't ever just fall into the trap of just creating a pattern or something, because that's actually what will end up, it'll end up being a pattern. And, you know, you, you want it to look like what it's supposed to be, so a piece of wood or whatever. All right, so just be very careful you don't fall into, into a pattern of some sorts. And then you can just use your, your pen and put scratchy bits in if you want to. Just gonna add a bit of interest to one or two of these little pieces here. Also, you can use um, texture to also create uh, interest in a specific area of your painting, you know, or your drawing. So if you want your eye to, to be drawn there, that's why I was saying be careful you don't make the edges too interesting because then your eye automatically goes to that piece, okay? <clears throat> so if you ever want something to be interesting, remember you can use color to make it more interesting. So you can use um, a bright color to, to draw the eye. You can also use contrast as well. And, um, and then your textures, okay, so to create interest in a specific area. So if you want to draw the eye into that specific area, those are the three things that you can use to really make your eye go there. Okay, so I'm going to just do this piece now. Um, when we do do the, the paint on here, just remember to make sure that you haven't inadvertently rubbed off some of the masking fluid, you know, by rubbing your hand over the, the thing. I know because yesterday when I was busy erasing, I realized I erased some of the, the masking fluid off. Look, it's not a train smash, but if it's obviously a big piece, <clears throat> it might affect the overall sort of effect.
Yeah, so here you can see I'm actually using, I'm barely touching the, the, the I nearly said canvas here. <laughs> I'm talking about painting. Um, I'm barely touching the paper with a pen. So you can also use the very thin one as well if you need to, to actually um, get that scratchy effect. But I was just adding a little bit of texture. So I've, I've sort of drawn in some lines and stuff and then I'm just adding a little bit of texture in between just to make the wood look more woody. But I mean, obviously you can go with more of the uh, almost illustration sort of view, you know, where there's not so much texture. But as you well know, I enjoy doing the, the textures here. So um, I, but I'm a bit of a realist in that sense. Okay. So I'm just bringing in some scratchiness of the wood. Okay. You'll see I always follow the same line as the wood. Huh? I never go in an opposite direction, all right, because it'll look a bit odd if you suddenly have a, a little sideways thing. You can do that with the colour, that's not an issue, <clears throat> but you don't want to really do that with the, with the pen. Right, make sure it's recording properly. There we go. Okay. All right, so now we've finished doing the fish, uh, the, the wood. So we finished doing the wood. And um, now the fish is going to be quite easy to do because there isn't a lot of texture involved like the wood. You know, the wood is actually quite a lot of work. That's why I sort of wanted to get that done and out of the way. Uh, whereas the fish, we're going to actually play around a little bit more with the paint to bring in, you know, some of those sort of nice sort of textures. Um, and and a little bit of the pen and ink. All right, so I'm going to use more of the paint to bring in those those little dots there, like that. Um, so I'm going to use the pen and ink, you know, sort of here for for the edges of um, the fins and sort of around the eye area a little bit, and to bring in some of these little scales at the top here as well. All right, so that's what I'm going to use the pen and ink for. And then obviously bring a few little bit of texture, a little bit of texture in here, but not too, nothing too hectic. All right, because I want this to sort of really stand out quite nicely. All right, so what I'll do is I'll actually sort of start on the tail end and just start bringing in those, um, those the tail parts. I'm going to use the number one pen again. So I'm going to stick with the number one pen. I'm very happy with that at the moment. <clears throat> and just start bringing in the, the tail. So just remember not to go and outline. Well, you wouldn't have. You wouldn't have sat there and actually outlined a big outline. Okay. Um, just but don't go now and put an outline right around the edge. Rather just get that impression, you know, make it a broken sort of line and then bring the fins in. Well, not the fins, sorry, the tail part. Just using your pen just to get that impression. And you just want a few little lines like that, and then you can make them a little bit darker if you want to, like they are in the picture. It's up to you. Just to make it more interesting as well. So always vary the lines slightly to make it more interesting and make it too much the same. You see how nicely that stands out from the rest of the background now um, because it's a totally different line it goes in opposite direction that's also why I said you mustn't bring in any opposite um, you know you don't, you don't want to really do cross hatching and stuff in wood because it actually doesn't really work you know you you sort of lose that woodiness <clears throat> okay and then I'm going to just get an idea of where some of those scales are so even although the line has gone in there it's not an issue here I'm going to actually use the final one, I think, just to bring in some of the scales. So remember scales, they're not really, well, they do sort of follow a pattern if you look at the top ones. They, but I mean, you don't, you're not going to sit there and try and copy that pattern exactly. 
Okay, you just want to get an idea of scales. And I'm just going to use this, the finer pen for that. Because I just don't want them to be too, too black and in my face, you know. So just sort of little circles that sort of almost overlap slightly. And that's, that's all you need just to get that. Um, you'll see the line I have made is not too solid, so it's not a big thick black line. And if you really wanted to, you could go and bring the scales all the way along the fish and bring in lots of scales, but that's, <laughs> that's entirely up to you. I'm not going to be doing that. You just want that impression, you know, get that impression of the scales there so that you know the fish has got scales. Actually, what's very interesting is um, I've got some koi here and um, this guy came and gave us some, some more koi and he was actually showing us you get two different ones. You get ones that have got no scales and ones that have got scales. I didn't realize that, actually. So you get like a smooth, smooth skinned koi. And then you get you get one that's actually got scales. So uh, yeah, it was actually very interesting. I just assumed all fish sort of had scales. <laughs> If you do zoom in on the, the top of the fish over here, you can see these, these sort of lines that sort of run like that. I don't know if you can see that if you actually zoom into it. Um, that also sort of gives it a bit of a, a form. Almost like a, I'm also using almost like a some, sort of a cross hatching type of effect over there, but not, not with a solid line as you can see. That's just an easier way of doing the scales at the top there because he has I want to sort of bring the scales in at the top and there may be a hint of them at the bottom as well but they are mostly at the top there um, so I'm going to just do that what you can do before we do the plate part if you're worried about going over into the fish then you can just um, take a bit of masking fluid after we've done the sketching, because it won't affect the pen and ink. Um, then you can actually just mask this edge over here. Okay, but I didn't want to do that beforehand because otherwise you won't be able to draw. All right, so if you do decide you want to um, mask that out, we can do that before we do the plate. At least the plate doesn't really have anything. Uh, that we need to sketch. It's just going to be a plane on its own. Yeah, so as I said, with the, with the scales of the fish, you can play around and you can just have marks that just sort of get the impression of, of fish scales. You don't have to, to follow it exactly as, as it is in the picture. I'm sort of trying different sort of marks to see which one actually works the best. Um, sort of the overlapping thing actually works quite nicely, sort of like a little bit of a overlapping, I think. Somebody's got birds singing in the background there. Okay, so what I want to show you here, and what I'll do is, um, I just because I want to get that round form of the fish, so I'm going to bring some scales around like that. I'll, I'll send you a photograph. Um, I'm just going to do a few more quickly, and then you'll see what I mean. Um, I know the fish probably isn't that round, actually. He's sort of, sort of flattish. 
um, because he's been he's been gutted so <laughs> but I do want to get that impression of a little bit of roundness coming from the top and then they then you use the lines you know you use that form to sort of make it look round you'll see my lines are very sort of vague my little marks because remember, when you're looking from afar, it's not going to be too much of an issue. I'm just going to finish this piece and then I'll send you a picture of, of what I was trying to do there. So I'm not going to do the whole, I'm not going to do the whole top of the fish here like that. I'm just going to bring in a few marks coming down like that. And then I'm going to sort of stop with it and a few more. So I'm not going to fill the whole fish. You'll see what I mean now, now when I'm when I'm sort of done with this little piece over here. I'll try and work quickly, um, just to to sort of give you the impression. Because remember, also when I'm doing this, I'm sort of doing it on the fly. So as I see something and I and I make a mark and I see that works quite well, then I sort of stick with that and I carry it, carry on with that. So I'm just going to take a photo of that and just send it to you guys. You'll see where I'm going with this on this section over here. So that's sort of how I'm going to be doing the, the body of the fish. I don't want to have it too much detail, just to get that impression. Because your eye, remember your eye will fill it in. <clears throat> So it's just an idea, you obviously don't have to follow it exactly the same, it's just to give you an idea. And remember this is a completely different mark to the wood, so it is going to stand out, even if you're worried it might not, because we are now sort of using little circles, um, or circular sort of shapes, we're not using any straight lines, the only straight lines we have are there in the the tail and the fin maybe as well. Which reminds me, let's just do the fin. So I want to definitely bring up the scales. Just I'm gonna have I'm gonna put the scales all around the top of his head here because I want that to stand out nicely from the paint. Actually, just sort of using little half circles. It actually works quite well, and they're quite small. More little circles as well, also fine. Little ovals, whatever works for you. Remember not to go all the way to the top. You know, his head is actually smooth from here onwards, so you don't want to to go all the way to where his gills are because his gills don't have um, any uh, scales on them. Beak, not so loud. He's competing with you here. So as I come further down, then I just make them a little bit further apart. I just want it to be quite nice and sort of close together at the top there. sort of a, a slight line there as well. We can bring that in too. That will also give it a nice bit of definition. 
Not a solid line, but just sort of like a broken line there. Can't wait to see what everybody's looks like. It's going to be very interesting. I love to see. Everybody's always so different. If you need to, you can stand up occasionally and just look at, just make it sure that everything's looking good. So for me, that, that's what I've done with the fish's body there is actually fine. I'm not going to bring in any more. I'm quite happy just with that. I'm just going to work on his face a bit now. That will be mostly paint to the face as well. So there's not a lot of um, pen and ink in that. So that I'm going to rather use the paint to define it. So I'll just define the certain parts of his face that I want to with a pen and ink. make his eye absolutely pitch black um, look they, they do have I know well, it's a dead fish so it's sort of like a dead eye um, <laughs> but if you look at the other one's eye the one that's got the yellow eye that one over there that looks a little bit better than this one over here which looks a bit sort of odd but I wouldn't make it quite as as big and yellow as the other one um, yeah it also looks a bit strange and it's so big
almost looks like he's got teeth here. It's not teeth, it's actually the wood. <laughs> So also we want to do the lemon as well if you want to outline, you know, if you did put up, I moved my lemon a little bit as well. So I'm just going to sort of outline it slightly because I'm, I'm worried I might go into it with a paint inadvertently if I don't actually make a point of outlining it there. <clears throat> Sort of random leaves. Okay, so that's I've done with that one. I'm quite happy with him. I think I'm gonna move on to the other fish quickly. Yeah, so just keeping it simple.
Yeah, so what you can do is if you have finished your fish, you can always put the masking fluid, you know, because we'll do the plate quickly, get that done, and then we can do the colour in the fish. In the water. So we'll do the plate first and just get that finished. Just remember to take a big brush instead of using your hand. So if you've been erasing like I have been doing before you paint, just take a big brush and brush it off. Don't use your hand because otherwise you're going to pull off some of your masking fluid, which you don't really want to do. Okay, so I'm going to leave my fish like that. I'm going to brush off my... Always use black paint as well. But... <clears throat> Looks like a very grumpy fish, this one. <laughs> okay. Alright, so I'm just going to brush this yeah. up. I'm going to put masking fluid um, just around the edges here. So we're going to do the plate. Okay. I'm going to do that in the meantime. So I'm just going to mask out and just hope this masking fluid doesn't take the pin off. I don't think so though. I think it should be fine. Sure. And this looks like it's actually affecting the... Okay, before you do that, I just want to see something. <clears throat> It doesn't usually affect the pen and ink, but it almost looks like it might be. But it's, oh, you know what? It's not a problem. It definitely is coming off with the masking fluid, which I find very interesting. Um, hmm. Oh dear. Okay. Strange. I've never had that problem before, but then I've used the, the I've normally used the dipping pen and nib. So I've never actually used these pens of the masking fluid, but I'm looking now and I can see as I'm putting the masking fluid on, it's actually taking some of the pen and ink. It's almost smudging it slightly. But you know what? I'm just going to do the very top there because I've already started. So that part I'm just going to carry on with up to his head. And then the rest, I think I'm just going to have to go around it. That's all. So what I'll do there, okay, because I can't do that with mine for some odd reason, um, what I'm going to do is I will use, when I put the water on, I'm going to... Take my paintbrush, and I'm going to make sure that I wet the paper beforehand exactly where I want the water to go, and then quickly pick up the paint and put it on there. Okay, so then that'll it'll stop it from bleeding into there. But it doesn't matter if it bleeds into that very really slightly. But if you are careful and you just wet the areas that you want the paint to go on, you will be able to get away with it. Okay, so um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to go that route. Just check, you can maybe just test to see you know, a little bit like this, see if it's taking off the, the pen and ink. Um, yeah, but, uh, and then just then just maybe, if it works for you, then it's fine, then, then you can continue. Okay, I'm going to mix my blue for the plate so long. Um, so you can make it any colour, I mean you don't have to make it blue, you can make it green if you want to. <laughs> Depends on what colour you like. So if you like the blue that's in here, that's cool. If you want to go with another colour, then 
then you can do that too. It's also fine. So, yeah, I wouldn't go with anything similar to the fish color because otherwise it's not going to stand out nicely. Um, but maybe just, you know, sort of a complementary color is always good. Remember to always store your masking fruit upside down, guys. It definitely makes a huge difference. So I'm actually going to go with my cerulean blue because I think it will actually work very nicely for the fish. And I mean, you can make it more intense. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as, as what is there. Remember to have some clean water to put on your paper. And also some water just to wash your brushes. Just have those separately. So I'm going to mix some cerulean here. So long. Maybe you want to make a turquoise. That could also be quite nice as well. And remember, depending on how dark you want the paint, will determine how how thick or how much pigment you put in. Hey, peak! Really, that's very loud. <laughs> that's that's actually screeching in my ears. So. Oh, word. All right. Yeah. So I've got some old blue here that I'm trying to re revive. So. Mix a whole lot of water in there. So because I can't really mask out here, um, when I actually look at it, it looks fine, but it was definitely going on my paintbrush. Just, I could see the black on my paintbrush when I was painting it on, so... Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that piece of plate first. I'm going to wet that piece of paper and then I'm going to put the paint on. Then I'm going to wet that piece around there and then I'm going to put the paint on. And you don't have to make it a solid color if you want to make it sort of more uh, interesting and give it some little white patches, make it like a rough looking plate, you can do that as well. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to pick a brush. It doesn't be too small, obviously. That should be quite nice with a nice... Must be able to make quite a nice tip as well. So, like, this one isn't really... Can you see it's not making a nice tip? So that's not going to be really good for going into the spaces. So that one I can use to do the colour instead. <clears throat> so I'm going to use this other brush of mine. Funny, this is a cheap one, which is actually the other one's expensive one. Um, it's actually interesting to see <laughs> which one is. Okay, so always have your colour ready to go. Just remember to, sometimes it's better if you're worried that you might have something underneath there, just to put a piece of paper down before you put your palette on top of that. Because you never know, there might just be something on your palette there. And I don't want to have to drag it over too far, so that's why I want to have it a bit closer. So I'm going to use clean water. Okay, and we'll have to see what happens. All these happy accidents. Okay, so brush ready to go. <clears throat> and remember you can if you just turn your head and you can look at uh, from an angle you'll be able to see if you can't see if you've got water in a specific area then you can just um, okay well here I've got the masking fluid so I don't have to worry about going around the edge as I said you can you don't have to make it solid if you want to make it um, Oh, it's drying very fast because it's quite hot here. So just look at it from the side. Make sure it is nice and wet. So I'm actually looking from the side the whole time. So I want this to be... I don't want it to be too wet. I don't want it so wet that it's going to run. Um, so we're just going to have to see what happens. And then I'm just going to do my wash over here. And obviously if you want it darker, then you can make it darker. But because I've got a fair amount of water on here, I can actually play around 
quite a bit before I have to stop, before it actually starts making lime. So that's why I like to, to put the water on. So you can sort of move it around. You know, as long as your paper's relatively wet, you can move it around. Okay, remember, it is going to dry a little bit darker than that. Oh, sorry. It's going to dry a little bit lighter than that. Just remember that as well. Okay, so I think that'll be fine. If you find it's pooling anywhere which you don't like, then you can actually just pick up your 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 paper, um, you know, your board, and then you can just sort of let it move around and do its own thing if you want to. Or you can actually take a piece of paper and you can actually just dab at the bottom there and you can soak that up. But I'm actually quite happy with that. <clears throat> now I'm going to do the next one. So here I'm going to have to be more careful. I need a bit more paint. I see I've already run out there. So I'm just going to put a little bit more paint down. Try and obviously keep the the the, the um. Uh, what was I going to say? The tonality relatively the same throughout, obviously, because I mean it's all one and the same plate. Okay, so here we go. So here I'm going to be careful, and I'm going to have to follow the fish not to go over where I don't want it to go over that's why it's good to have a paintbrush with a bit of a point what you can do is you can outline the, the edges first because remember your paper will stay quite damp initially and then you can fill in the other parts afterwards because your water will automatically go to that spot where you stopped it won't go further it'll just go as far as what you've painted it okay and then you can just fill in I'm looking from the side making sure that I've got enough water on here it's drying very quickly so I am turning my head you see the sides almost dry already but once you've got that first bit of water on there, it's actually fine because once you put the next lot on, on top of that to make it wetter, it will stay longer. Okay. And right, pick up my paint. And obviously do the same. So we'll try and follow within that line. Remember, if it does happen to go over somewhere where you don't want it to go over, you can scrub it out with another paintbrush. All right. But try and obviously follow. So if I hadn't wet the paper beforehand, then these would have made lines. Okay, so but because I've wet the paper now, um, you can see it just, it just falls into the water. Sort of blends, flows into the water to give it more of a solid sort of, a, a nicer transition. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Let me just go to the edge there. Right, and then I'm going to do the bottom piece. It doesn't matter, like for instance, these leaves here, these leaves are dark green. So if you go over it with the blue, it's not an issue because you'll go over it with the green anyway. So, you know, there's certain things where you don't have to be too particular.
just remember if it is still slightly damp remember you can tear your paper if you peel the uh, the masking fluid towards the paper so if you're not 100 percent sure always just put it towards you like that all right before you carry on so remember i'm not going to pull the masking fluid off the edge of the plate because i still got to do the wood okay actually funny enough it didn't actually take off it didn't actually smudge the pen i thought it was you know i wonder if it wasn't actually the um the pencil that was left on here it might have been picking up the pencil i think that's quite possible because i see it actually hasn't taken off the pen and ink so sorry i made extra work for you guys <laughs> But at least you learn something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, but I think um, when I'm looking now, I think what it actually was doing, it was actually picking up some of this, um, that, uh, what's that stuff called? Oh, man. The graphite paper. I think it was picking up the graphite paper. Anyway, but you learned a lesson, so you can actually do it without the... <laughs> without the masking fluid okay um just going to pull that off there so i decided look you could have either have gone around it and left a white you know white area but um, i actually masked those pieces out because i actually wanted that sort of quite a sharp sort of look if you don't want a sharp look then obviously you don't mask it out then you rather just go with the um the paint and just leave a white gap okay because but i wanted that sort of sharpish sort of look Okay, cool. So I'm going to do this top fish now quickly. Okay, okay. Right. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to mix sort of pinkish. I've got some. Um... Okay, I've got a bit of rose geranium, which I think is quite nice because it's sort of a purpley, you know, it's a cool pinkish. I want to bring that in. So I'm going to use the rose geranium if I can open this tube. <laughs> geranium came out in one huge blob so I'm just going to put that over there I'll have to use it later it's obviously been leaking <laughs> I'm now full of rose geranium okay so I'm going to bring some rose geranium I'm going to I've got some Payne's grey if you don't have Payne's grey then you just have a bit of raw umber and a bit of uh, blue to sort of get that grey colour. Okay, but I'm going to use a Payne's grey. And then I'm also going to have a little bit of raw um, uh, so, uh, burnt umber. And if you want to, you can also bring in a little bit of um, what's this, burnt sienna. All right. So just play around with colours that you like. Just sort of as long as you sort of got roughly an idea of what, of what colours you're looking for there. Um, and then what was, oh yes, I'm just going to sell a burnt umber. Okay, burnt umber there. And I'm not going to put huge amounts of colour. So you can either make this sort of pale like it is in the photograph, but if you want to make your fish more colourful, obviously then you can put the paint on a little bit thicker. All right. But what I am going to do here, the way I'm going to do this, is um, I'm also going to put water down. I'm going to put water down on here and then I'm just going to dab the colours where I want them to be. Okay, so again I'm going to pick up my paintbrush with some clean water and I'm just going to go over my fish with that. Just up to where the scales are. I'm not going to go all the way um, <clears throat> to his fins there for the moment. So I'm sort of going to do the body of the fish first quickly. Make sure you only go up to where it ends there, otherwise you're going to be going into the blue. That's why it's important to make sure that your paint above here is actually dry. Otherwise it's also going to bleed in there. I'm trying not to get it to bleed. So I'm not going to do his face right now. I'm just literally going to do his body just for the moment and then I'll go into the face. Obviously, you can do it all in one go if you if you're that brave. Okay. Right, and then I'm going to start picking up some of my colours. 
and start draining them in. Maybe if you find you put one color too, too much of one color down, you can also dab it out with a paintbrush, oh, with a paintbrush with a bit of a tissue paper. So I just want to dab. Remember to leave little bits of white here and there as well. Remember, it is going to dry a little bit darker than this, so just remember that. Oh, I always keep on saying it. It's going to dry a little bit lighter than this. <laughs> so if you want it a bit darker, then just rather pick up a little bit of dark. I quite like this pinkish part on the tail. Stands out quite nicely. And at the top there, it's got a little bit of the blue in it, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blue and then a bit of the paints grey. And then those darker dots I'm going to put in afterwards, so when that paint is dry. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the blue that I used for the, for the top there, just to bring a hint in there. And then I'm going to pick up a bit of the paints grey. Okay, so you can see that, can you see how that sort of bled into the other colours, which I actually really like, I really like that, that's actually come out really nicely. And I'm going to use a bit of the burnt umber, I love this happy accident thing, it's so awesome, I never know what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to bring in some of the raw umber in the bottom here, oh, sorry, burnt umber. And just dabbing along here and there. And remember, you can go over this and make it slightly darker if you do want to. So if you want to make it slightly darker at the top, I mean, it's a little bit drier. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually take some of the Payne's Grey or the raw umber or burnt umber and actually dab that so it makes, um, bring in those little black dots. But that I'll do afterwards when it's a bit drier. You can do it when it's still slightly damp and it'll bleed slightly. But if you want more distinction of your dots, then you must rather wait until it's completely dry. Okay, so I'm just going to do this fin now. You'll note I didn't actually wet the fin because the fin's so small, it's not an issue to, to actually do that. So. There's quite a bit of water on my paintbrush. Maybe a bit too much. Okay. Just go with that for the moment. I know that looks really dark, but remember when I bring in these dots at the top here, then it's going to come together nicely. So my paint is slightly damp there still, which is what I want. So I want these little dots to sort of bleed in a little bit. And I'm just dotting, I'm not um, painting. fish to, to sort of stand out against that plate so that's why I'm making it so dark. Look you can also use your pen and ink to do that if you want to. Remember to squint your eyes it really does help to make sure you're sort of on the right track okay because often you can get caught up in this, this sort of whole dabbing dabbing thing and then actually sort of lose track of what you're actually trying to achieve. <clears throat> As I said, you can also just use the pen and ink if you want to.
So you can sort of see where I'm going with these dots here. Um, as I said, you don't have to make them quite so dark. And I'm just going to bring in a few. This is now with the this is with the burnt umber that's sort of mixed in a little bit with the uh, thing. So you can use a raw umber. The burnt umber is sort of mixed in with a little bit of the Payne's grey here. Okay, so that's where you sort of bring in your dots. And you can see those dots here aren't as dark. So I'm just going to, it's a fair amount of water. But I'm very happy. That's actually looking very nice. Also, just be, don't go overboard, be subtle. You can see like, you see there's like a line over there that, that happened to stay there. I'm happy with that. You know, there's a little bit of white here and there. That's nothing wrong with that. And then obviously the face, you'll do the same way, etc. So you'll put water on the face and then you'll put some of your pinks and, and blues, etc. So you can basically, the way I've done this is what you'll do with the next fish as well. And then obviously um, with the top of his, his head um, and his face as well. Okay, so the lemon, you'll do the same thing. The lemon, you can actually just put the lemon on as it is with the yellow. That's, I mean, that's easy enough to do. So the wood, I'm going to go more with the Payne's Grey and the raw umber um, because I don't want it to be too warm. I don't want it to be as warm as what this is. So let me just find my raw umber there. Okay. Or you can mix Payne's Grey and the burnt, burnt umber also works as well because they're both, you know, even though the burnt umber is a little bit warmer, it's fine because you're going to be mixing it with the Payne's Grey. Um, sorry, I just sure my right, just, There we go, raw amber, Payne's Grey. Okay. And now this... Sarah? Yes. Sorry, Sharon, if I don't have Payne's Grey... Um, what else can I use? Oh, you can burnt use, umber? you can burnt, a burnt umber and a blue, or raw umber and a blue. That'll give you a grey. Okay, just more oh. on the blue side then. All right. Okay. Yeah, then you can do that. Okay, so here again, if you want to, so you have two choices here. You can either put the colour on directly, or you can wet it and then put the colour on and let it run and do its thing. Okay, so that's entirely up to you. I'm going to rather go with just putting the colour on directly and see what happens. I sort of almost don't want to, um, I want to be able to leave some white. Okay, so if I put water on it, isn't necessarily going to work so well. So let's just try here. Okay. And I'm just going to sort of drag along. You see here, you've got a bit more control because now you can leave some of the whites behind if you want to. Also following the wood, and obviously because I've got the masking fluid there, it's not an issue. And you can use the tip of your paintbrush as well, just to drag. If you want to, you can use a smaller paintbrush even. So if you prefer to use a smaller paintbrush to have a bit more control, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to, almost like I was doing with my pin, sort of just scratching some wood wood into that, leaving little bits of white here and there. Okay, so just remember to leave some white behind. Okay, so you can see it gives a completely different texture to if you put water on. But if you want to go the water route, you can. If you want to put water down and then let it bleed into that, you can also do that. This just gives the lines, the paint a little bit more of a sharper edge, which is what I'm looking for, okay. Can you see that wood looks, it's got a sharper, the, the paint has got a sharper edge to me, which is, yeah, so the texture that I'm looking for. I hope I'm, I hope I'm making sense, guys. <laughs> Perfectly. 
Okay, and then what you can do is you can do each piece of wood like that, okay, add, you can see there I bought the Payne's Grey and, and then that's also got the, the bit of the raw umber as well. Um, <clears throat> so it's got a bit of dif different, the colours are, how do I put it, um, it's not just one solid colour, so it's not just Payne's Grey or, or burnt umber or raw umber. I've got a sort of a mix, so it gives it a bit of variation. All right, so you don't want it just to be plain, one plain colour, but of course you can also go that route if you want to. All right, so I will do that with all of the wood. And then once I've done all of the wood and I've done the fish, then what I'll do is afterwards I'll go back and I'll look and I'll say, okay, do I want to add a little bit more paint in certain areas of that wood. It might be a little bit too much white, but rather leave the white now. So I'm like almost tempted to go and fill in some more of the white, but I'm actually thinking, no, don't do that because I've made that mistake before where I've actually gone and covered all the white and then I end up with, um, you know, just this massive color, which is not what I was looking for. All right, so rather go this route, leave a little bit of white behind and do all the other wood, do your fish, Look at it, take all the masking fluid off, etc. And then you can go back in and say, okay, cool, I need to make this a little bit darker, or I need to bring in some more pen and ink, etc. Okay, so rather err on the side of caution and leave a bit of white because that's that's what's so nice about the watercolor is the ability to be able to leave some of that white behind and not just to cover everything. Okay. Alright, so I will continue on with my tail, which is very similar to, to the background. fish's head and then I'm going to drop some colour into it.
So I'm trying to add a little bit more colour, um, just so that they do pop a little bit more. Otherwise, I'm finding they're going to be a little bit too vague. Otherwise, I would have to bring in a little bit of um, pen and ink to make them a little bit more distinguished. That's the word I'm looking for. A little bit more. So I'm just bringing a little bit more colour here. That's just so that um, the fish pop a little bit more. Also a little bit more contrast as well. So him, I'm going to also give a bit of a yellow eye. Like the one at the bottom there. To the lemon.
cool now. Another fish. Remember to leave a bit of white here and there, especially when you're doing a big area like this. You can get a bit caught up in sort of uh, just looking at the colour of that, and forgetting that you're actually painting in watercolour. equal so it's always good to vary them ever so slightly but do remember that um, obviously you can't make them completely different colors well I suppose you could if you really wanted to
So you can see here, for instance, the um, the water sort of went a little bit into the blue when I put the water down. So yeah, then you can basically just. I think that will do for the moment. Once I've done the wood over here, then I'll see if the tail needs a little bit more definition to stand out against the wood. Um, okay, but now I'm going to do the wood. I'm going to start this side because that's, that's paint is a little bit wet still. Um, this is not too bad. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll take a hair dryer and just make sure the fish are completely dry before you go in and start doing the rest of the painting. Okay, cool. So I've done the fish now. I've let them dry a little bit. And uh, I should be able to work on here without it blending into the, the fish paint. So um, what I've done is I've already started on this side, as you saw before. 
The colors I've used here is um, the Payne's Grey and a little bit of raw or burnt umber, um, just so that it's not 100% just grey. Okay, so just to give it a slight warmth, but I don't want it to, to be as warm as the fish, but I also don't want it to be just one sort of colour. But you can, of course, just go with one colour if you prefer. I'm also using a flat brush for this. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is I just want to keep sort of sharp edges and I want to leave some of the white behind. So the reason I'm doing that is, um, you know, especially with watercolour, you want little bits of white showing through your paint. You don't want it just to be solid, uh, depending obviously on what subject matter you want. But what I'll do is I'm going to carry on here with these. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on here with the rest of the panels of wood and then Afterwards, I'll decide whether or not I want to bring in a little bit more color and not leave quite so much white. Okay, so this I'm going to speed up. Okay, cool. So you can see here, um, I did want this to stand out a bit more, but I think I've made it a little bit too dark there. Um, so the paint is a little bit too thick, so it's a little bit too much. So what you can do here as well, then, big. So what, 
So what you can do here is you can actually just scrub some of that out, just taking plain water and your paintbrush. So again, I'm going to wait for this to dry before I pull off the masking fluid. 
um, otherwise I might tear the paper. This will especially happen if you've got very cheap uh, or thinner paper, should I say. Okay, cool. So now I've taken the tape off and you can see where some of this is a bit dark for my liking. Um, that's a personal thing, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to be scrubbing some of, off the paint as well. I almost prefer this slightly lighter version over here. So I'm going to do that and then maybe just add a little bit of that um, burnt umber to this side as well. Because I quite like that effect over there. <clears throat> as I said, often it's a happy accident. Sometimes you just have to play around until you get the right thing. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lighten that slightly.
Okay, cool. So I've done the background to my liking now, the, the wood, should I say, which is the background. Um, and now what you can do is you can just go through your picture, decide if there's something that you want to add with a pen and ink. Um, you'll see I can still see some of the pencil marks over here. Unfortunately, the pencil I used was a little bit dark, so it is going to leave some marks there which I can't erase. So therefore I'm going to put them in with a pen and ink rather. Just remember, don't use any very solid lines. You'd rather use a broken line.
happy with that. Um, so what you can see what I did was I enhanced the wooden texture using the pen and ink. So I brought a little bit more pen and ink back into it. And um, instead of making this more faded, I decided to actually bring that texture into it because it's a totally different texture to the fish. It won't always work. It just depends on what you've done with your fish. And what you could also do is you could go back into your fish if you wanted to and you could do a, a few little extra dark lines with a thicker pen if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. If you want to do something like that, you can just enhance some of those um, the scales that we put in. You can do that too. That will also make your fish pop a little bit more, but that's entirely up to you. Okay, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and until next time. Cheers.